the studio, some old friends of mine, a tip for the top, the pretenders. Well, I enjoy singing, but I don't make records for myself to listen to. So I don't, I do find it hard. It's the producer's job is to listen to the vocal so I can go and play pinball or whatever. But I get used to it eventually. Mm. It's not a big problem. I haven't had to see an analyst about it. <laughs> Well, when I went to London, I wasn't in the music scene. I was selling handbags on uh, uh, Tottenham Court Road. For and then time. making picture frames. Um, working in an, I modeled in an art college. Mm. Um, drew t-shirts. I mean, I did a lot of things before I eventually got in the band, so. I mean, I, when I went over, I did, uh, buy a copy of the Melody Maker and start looking through the back pages for, you know, ads for vocalists wanted. Mm. And I think I made a few phone calls, but it was uh, still something I was keeping pretty quiet. Let me inside you Into your room I've heard it's lined With the things you don't show Lay me beside you Down on the floor I've been your lover from the womb to the tomb. I dress as your daughter when the moon becomes round. You be my mother when everything's gone. And she will always carry on. Something is lost.
When you formed the Pretenders, what, what were you after? Was it sort of a specific sound that you wanted, or did you know at the time what you wanted? Well, it was very influenced by the people I was working with. I'd written these songs, but to, you know, it was meeting James Honeyman Scott that really brought the melody out in me because I, I was pretty punked out at the time, mm. and I didn't have, uh, you know, I, I had denied my melodic tendencies. Um, I did have a vision, you know. mm. but you can hear what the vision was. Mm. I, I can't describe it any better. Mm. But this band has been going through quite a lot of stages. I mean, have you, do you feel that the vision is still there, that it's still the same? Well, I'm, I'm carrying on in a tradition that the original band sort of uh, invented this sound, mm. uh, which to my mind wasn't terribly original, but it was fresh enough and, it, you know, I got off on it. Um, but it was something that was uh, distinctive enough that I can certainly carry on, you know, in this tradition. Mm. Mm. You still want to be a band. I mean, after, after all these, all the people are gone, all the all the changes that's been in the band, you still call it the Pretenders. And is that? Do you, do you like the concept of a band? Do you want? want yeah, I only like the concept of a band. I'm just not interested in anything else. Mm. You know, I like playing. If I'm playing the guitar, mm. God help me. Then uh, it's nice to have a. I like to have a guitar player next to me and a bass player and a drummer. I, I have no interest in. Uh, in doing it in any other way. I wouldn't know how to do it any other way. Mm. And it still gives me a thrill if someone says, oh, aren't you the singer in The Pretenders? Really? Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't do anything for me if someone says, are you Chrissy Hind? So you managed to keep this, those two identities separate somehow? Uh, well, I like being in a band. I'm not terribly keen on, on myself, just on, on my own. Mm. And well, I, I really don't think an audience would be either. What do you think it makes a band work? I mean, what, what's the magic of a band? What keeps it together? Well, I can't say what keeps my band together because my band, uh, you know, hasn't stayed together. But uh, the magic of a band is having the different personalities, two guitars, bass, drums, some keyboards, and everyone has a different musical approach. And that, to me, is what's exciting in music. Um, I think a lot is lost when someone stays in the studio and plays all the instruments themselves. I mean, a lot of people like that, and I think it's, it, it, it can be good, but it's not the thing that excites me. Mm. You know, I grew up on the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, and I love that. That's what I love. I love bands. That's really what turns me on. Middle of the road trying to find me I'm standing in the middle of life with my pants behind me I got a smile for everyone I meet as long as you don't tie dragging my bed or dropping the bomb on my street come on baby or get in the road or come on now in the middle of the road yeah The road. You see the darndest things Like crackers every now and jeeps through the city Wearing them big diamond rings and silk suits Past corrugated tin tracks full of a kiss Oh man, I don't mean a hamster nursery But when you own a big chunk of the bloody third world The babies just come with the scenery Now come on, baby mm, Get in the road well, Come on now
love it killed the sand. I can't get from the cab to the curb without some little trick on my back. Don't harass me, can't you tell I'm going home? I'm tired as hell. I'm not the can I used to be. I got a kid, I'm 33, baby. Get in the road. Come on now. guitar I can't remember I remember very well what it what it looked like how old do you think you were about 14 how did you do, learn to play it did you work it out yourself well I got a book that had um, you know pictures of chords dots on strings and then I uh, recall taking a few guitar lessons from someone maybe about five and he showed me how to play a few blues progressions but mainly I was being a girl I was really shy of playing with the other guys at school, so I just tried to make it up on my own. Did you ever try, try not, to? Not terribly yeah. successfully, but well, but then when I realized that I could make, once I made a few chords, I could, I got more interest in melodies and, and uh, words, and then I started uh, writing songs because I was on my own. Sometimes, mm. sometimes not. I'm not terribly ambitious, and I only write when I'm on my own, unfortunately, which is a habit <laughs> I'd like to change because I'm not really on my own so much anymore now that mm. I've got kids. and. Uh, a more active domestic life than I used to. Mm. But um, do you write a lot? I mean, you, you release albums so so rarely. Do you have a big production of songs? Not really. I mean, if I had to whip up, up another ten songs to do an album in the next six months, I could do it. Mm. I'm sure I've got them unfinished songs, and I could sit down and write some if I if I if the pressure was on. I always said, I can't write under pressure, I have to be free. But, you know, really, I was bullshitting myself because it's until, you know, the whip is being cracked that I, I'll motivate. I'm not very motivated. Mm. Unfortunately, I'm not proud of it. Mm. But I do have other activities in my life. I Being a mother and everything, mm. I can't just totally dedicate myself to my, my work all the time. And I think that would become a little bit boring, possibly. Mm. How do you combine that, being a mother and going on the road and working as much as you do? Well, I bring them with me. I mean, they're not here today, but I'm mm. only going to be away for a couple of days. Mm. Do they enjoy that? Well, if they don't, if they stop enjoying it, then I'll I'll modify my behavior. Mm. You know, <laughs> because their their happiness is more important to me than mine, obviously, as their mother. I found a picture of you. Oh, oh, oh. would hijack my world at night. We're placing the past We've been cast out of oh, oh, oh. Now we're back in the fight We're back on the train
as it be It forces to live like we do Bring me to my knees When I see what they've done to you As I stand here today Knowing that deep in my heart They'll fall to ruin one day For making us part I found a picture of you oh, Those were the happiest days of my life A break in the battle was your part oh, oh, oh. In the wretched life of a lonely heart Now we're back on the train oh, Back on the chain game I wish I had a wife who would stay at home and look at the kids after the kids You know, it's a big pain in the ass to have the kids there I mean, I get up at 7.30 with them, and if I'm in the studio, I have to go back home and have supper or put them to bed. It breaks the continuity. It's not really rock, rock uh, hours, you know, getting up at 7.30. But um, if I do it, it's rock and roll. That's how I have to look at it. Mm. Yeah. It was a blow to me, actually, to get pregnant and, you know, lose my masculine physique yeah. for a year. But... Uh, I battled through it. <laughs> on, on Pack, there's a cover of a, of a Jimi Hendrix song. Is that something that you've wanted to do for a long time? Or? It was one of the songs I've wanted to do. I, I probably could easily put together a, a, an album of cover songs. Mm. Two albums. You know, but it was a song that I held close to my heart for since the first Jimi Hendrix album. Did you used to be a fan of his? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, of course. <laughs> Who wasn't? <laughs> Did it influence your ways of playing guitar when you learned to play the guitar? Uh, unfortunately, I can't say that he influenced my guitar playing. I think my guitar playing isn't, isn't really up to that. <laughs> but he's influenced my lifestyle. In what way? Well, I think uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, by copying what we imagined he was doing, it did sort of lift us out of this sort of mundane... Um, lifestyle that we, we had grown accustomed to in America. Mm. Was it, was, it was a period of cosmic consciousness and mind expansion. Were you into that? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Did yeah. you? We took lots of LSD. <laughs> so. Did you learn anything from, from that, that attitude, that, that sort of whole area that, that he was in? I don't know. I learned something when I was growing up. You know, I've learned a lot in the last 20 years. I think, I thought I knew a lot when I was 20, but it's taken me another 20 years to get some realization and experience. It was a different time. It's, it would be very hard to compare a time 20 years later in pop music, because uh, pop music so much reflects the, the, the flavor of the moment.
There's a song on, on the album called Millionaires, and that seems to sort of give a little elbow to, to, to other rock musicians who sort of who drive around in their, their fancy cars and all their money. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, very wealthy rock stars do behave in the most peculiar manner. How? <laughs> well, you know, they go into clubs with bodyguards. I mean, if you have to take a bodyguard into a club, then just, you, sh you just shouldn't be in that club. I do feel a, like a bit of a target, like anyone in my position, especially with my big mouth, you know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm dead keen on anything that can uh, aid the, uh, the ecological cause, then I, I'll always lend myself and be there, be it, you know, the links or uh, anything concerning the vegetarian crusade, anything that aids the, 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 the environmental crises that we're in. Because that, to me, that's all. It, it's it's all part of uh, the same issue. They're not really isolated, but you can put lend your weight to where you know you see there's a neglected area. Does it get you into trouble, your big mouth? Um, it it can do. It creates too much fuss and and attention, and that you know that threatens my private life a little mm. bit, if you can call it a private life. But you know my home life. Mm. Does it get you out of trouble? Do you talk your way out of trouble? Uh, well, I can always just go in the studio and make a record and keep my app shut in any other capacity, you know, if it gets bad. But um, that's unlikely to last for too long. You said once that when you came closer to 40, you'd quit. You wouldn't want to be a rock star at 40. Well, everyone says that when they're 20, don't they? <laughs> that's part of the rock and roll tradition. But what do you think about it now? Um, I think about it often. But... Um, I, as long as I still like making records and, and getting on stage, then I'm quite happy to do so. I, I don't have a problem about my age. I'm 38 now, but I've never been bothered about my age. I've never lied about my age. Oh, I mean, I'm vain enough sometimes to add a few years and say I'm 40 or 41, you know, and then I, I think maybe I look better for my age. But in actual fact, I'm, I'm, um, I'm only 38. <laughs>
Do you think that, that rock and roll is not so much about youth anymore? That it's, it's like a huge generation that grew up with rock and roll that will always stay It certainly isn't about youth anymore. It's become contemporary music. Um, but I think a lot of val valuable music comes, can, should come from the youth culture. Uh, I do, I'm not entirely sure that it is because the, uh, you know, what, what is lucrative about getting in a rock band now is that you can make a lot of money mm. and uh, make videos and maybe become a film star or something. So the purity of just being in a rock and roll band because you don't want to have a career is, uh, gets a bit lost in the shuffle there, I think. Um, and it has become such a big business. I mean, it wasn't like that in my day. What appealed, uh, what, what was the appeal for me I don't really even know if that it exists anymore as such. I mean, perhaps it does. Mm. I really just wanted to play guitar and sing in a rock and roll band. That's all I wanted. That, that's all I've ever wanted. So and I'm sure that want. that still exists for a lot of people, that that's what they'd love to do. I mean, what thrills me is when I walk into a gig and I look on the stage and I, I see the amps and I see the little red lights come on. That, that's what it's all about for me. If I'm so far away that I have to watch the performer on a big screen, um, you know, it's not, to me, that's not, well, I don't go, I don't put myself in those situations and I, I hope I don't put my audience in that kind of a situation. Mm. Do you think you'll ever tire of that? Seeing the red lights go on and... I don't think I'll ever quiet. tire of seeing the little red lights go on, no. <laughs> Of your time, I haven't got the 